Good afternoon, everyone, and certainly we're glad to continue our study in the book of Isaiah. Today, we are covering one chapter. That one chapter is so deep and so involved that you will be able to pull a lot out of it as we look at a conversation um, that is a needed conversation, and that is the judgment of God. We're going to kind of have an in-depth um, discussion before we get into the actual text of the scriptures, Isaiah chapter 33. I want to talk for a few moments and kind of get your honest feedback. And please remember that we are live so that they can hear your voices. Um, I think that a lot of believers in particular, we see it in the Old Testament among the prophets, uh, a few references in the New Testament, but among people, wide scale, I think, Brother Topping, there are many people who question, who have issues, who struggle with the judgment of God. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't know that much about the judgment of God and I don't really understand what that means, you should understand a little of that because we just finished, I just finished the series from the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk argument with God was how long? In other words, we see the injustices, we see the things that are going on around us, and yet it seems as though you are taking the slow train, that you are taking a long time to act, you are taking a long time to do something. So I want us to think about that today as we give our responses in just a few minutes uh, about why we struggle with the judgment of God. I gave you that example, I've listed several other bullets. Um, but tell me, why do you think we struggle without listing the other ones that I've referenced with the judgment of God? Well, there's no doubt in my mind that certainly I as an individual feel that God is not working fast enough. Mm -hmm. And the judgment itself, yes. I feel in some instances, should be as swift as it was in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. now, I understand that God is a loving, patient God, and I thank God for that because he probably could have taken me off planet a long time ago. So I have to be at least compassionate enough to understand that God is still in control and that his judgment will prevail no matter how I might feel about it not happening when I would like to see it. Now you left us on two sides of the pendulum. Mm -hmm. You argued for the fact that we wish that we could see God act faster. And then you came back and yet you <laughs> said, okay, we know that God is working. The problem, and let's be honest with the brothers and sisters, is Deacon Carlton, his time. His time. It seems like sometimes he's taking a long time. Brother Tuckett alluded to the fact that if we could see him uh, seemingly get in a hurry um, and start doing like he did in the Old Testament. You remember the Old Testament? I preached this one year at the convention. Macedonia backed me up. And I was the morning speaker at uh, the convention in East Carolina. And we took two buses, so don't forget that. And I talked about the scripture where the ground opened up. And the people were sinful, and God allowed the ground to open up and then swallow it. Okay, part of Reverend Flowers, his judgment. So if we would see God just take him out, problems, take him out. People who are like some of the world leaders, since we're alive, I won't call their names. Yes, Take them out. But I want you to understand that just because he's not taking them out does not mean he's not doing something. And that he is not aware of what is going on. We had a deacon who was determined for years when I first came here, Deacon Clarence McKee. And Deacon McKee used to say he grinds slow, but he grinds heavy. And so even though it seems like he's not doing anything, he is. So let's look at it. Think, think for a moment about Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. Think about the Israelites, Mary, who cried out to God, the Bible says, for 400 years. Let's read that. Let's read what God said when he finally responded. Starting at verse 7. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large 
unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. I'm good right there. Okay. Have come unto me. Yeah. But brother, think about it. If you were one of the Hebrew children, you says, look, we've been calling you for 400 years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Four, I'm not talking about 40 days. Mm -hmm. 40 years. 400 years. And you are now just responding. Mm -hmm. You remember, he called Moses up. Moses was in the, uh, uh, up on the mountain. And he spoke to Moses through the uh, burning bush. And that, these are part of his words. I heard their cries. I'm, called, well, I'm glad he heard their cry. My God, he waited 400 years. Yeah. 400 years is a long time. In our time. In our time. Yes. Pat, why did you emphasize, place emphasis on in our time? Because God's timing is not our time. His timing is totally different off the scale. We can't even imagine how, how current or how later he's going to take care of anything. But what are you going through? Let's talk to those people who are going to listen tonight or this evening or tomorrow and who are asking the same question that the back of asked, how long? How long? As believers, as Christians, most of us have matured in the faith. Our faith has grown. But for those persons who are going through, who are in the fiery furnace today mm -hmm. and are asking how long, how do we convince the unconvinced to become convinced? We. We say well, I'm just wait on the Lord. But that's what we're talking about. That's the folk who have become frustrated as they wait. Can we talk to them about There's nothing we can do about it. Come back. I'm going to say that. But it's not. That baby just came up with a sound feel like it. There's nothing, said, there's nothing, nothing we can, can do about it. Do about it. We so what do you do while we wait? Because we trust, trust in what God. he's doing. We trust, we trust in sovereignty. We trust in his sovereignty and who he is. All right. I like that. She said we trust in sovereignty and we trust who he is. Okay, but how did, you know, let's be real. How did they feel while they were waiting? Think about the current situation. Yes. Look what uh, is being done in other countries. Look at the Palestinians on the way it's said. Yes. All right, whether we are on the Israeli side or on the Palestinian side. Mm -hmm. When you're holding a dead child to die, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be a father. Yes. How long? How long? When are you going to do something? Mm -hmm. All right, other countries. Brandon. And even in our own country, even though there have been many strides in civil rights, even today the tables are still not level. The playing field is still not level. And often I wonder, you know, why? Absolutely. We could say it as a race. Yes. Let's be honest. Lord, it feels like things have been locked sometimes. But yet, Pat say it, she's on it. It looks like God is not on our side. And it seems like over and over again that we are always on the flip side. Okay? Yes, ma'am. God gives us the grace. Ah! Jesus said, God gives us the grace. And he said, His grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. All right? Come in. I know mean, y'all said we're not in Isaiah yet. Yes, we are. Because this is the prelude to the lesson today. Let's read Psalm 37. Verses 1 through 2. Many of you don't even have to read it. You know, pray. Uh -huh. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like. Oh! And the audacity of the writer to include the word soon. <laughs> For they shall soon be cut, cut down. down. Wow. Well, you say what you say? But how, how soon is soon? soon. <laughs> it's God's time. It's going to It's going to happen soon. Absolutely. But I had to grow to that point. Mm. Yes, yes. Your enemy, your neighbor, who cares nothing about God. Yeah, right. Seemingly, it's just prospering. Right. Right. 
uh, just going along and, 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 and it never seemed to be sick, never seemed to have any issues. Uh, uh, it, it, it appears as though. Yes. And the folks say they got it going on. Yeah. And then those who have committed themselves to God deal with one situation after another, yes. one doctor's visit after another. And it appears as though God is on their side and not on ours. Yes. But it appears that way. Because they ain't all the way in the back. We just have to continue to pray. That's right. And have faith in God and know that he's still on the throne. Okay. Continue to pray. Trust in God and know that he's on his throne and his word will not come back home. That's right. How many of you know what he said he would do? That's his problem. And what else? That's bad. He's just a test of your faith. All the scripture, you can quote it, but when it comes down to the real nitty gritty, it's yes, no, or wait. His answer might not be yes. His answer might be no. For the well, you're not ready to, to, keep, to receive the gift that he's trying to give you. Mm -hmm. so. You're on it, uh, Deacon S. And, and the thing about it is, in preaching, we are taught uh, you got two time zones. Mm -hmm. You got the time of the text. That's right. And you got what's called the interpretation bridge that goes from then until now. Mm -hmm. Okay. That bridge and getting into the now. That's the difficult time. That bridge. Okay. And most of our young people, when they study the scriptures, they'll say to me, and particularly I love what I'm teaching them in the Slices of Life class, most of them have read the scripture. Yeah. They struggle with applying it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Making it fit, making it applicable to their current situation. And even though I'm not doubting what Mr. Decker said, I totally agree. And what many of you say, even though we know pray, yeah. we know wait, and all of those things, but to those in the fight. You got to encourage yourself in the process. Encourage yourself in the process. Do that process. If it, like the beginning of the bridge over to the end. You got to be some encouragement. You got to grow. We got to quit. My point, my problem was so much concern. Quit looking at the other fellow and think about the grace of God. What God has done for me. Because even in the process, I'm still here. But I think the enemy yes. us looking at the other fellow. Yes, yes. But, Right. If we want to grow stronger in the Lord and we want to get to the other side of the bridge, we got to leave that alone. You already said he's a liar. Yes. He said what, bro? I said, we already told us. You already told us that the enemy is a liar. There's no truth in here, yeah. so we shouldn't even have our ear. Okay. We should not. We should not. Sometimes he does. But you got to get to the point where you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Absolutely. I like it. Anyone else? Oh, I love it. Y'all in age. I know something you said, and I thought about it, especially in terms of what's going on nowadays. After all is said and done, God's hand has to be on it because, and I, I don't want to seem indelicate, and I believe I won't make a faux pas, but if things were such as they were, the Israelis could very well have dropped an atom bomb on those people. Other countries could have used chemical warfare to wipe out their enemies, so to speak. Yet, there is a reasonable control, so to speak, in view of how people are treating other people. No matter how horrific we see it, there is still a control. Oh, I'm with you. And, I, and it goes back to the top, which I know you're familiar. You know, we have the rules of war, yes. mm -hmm. which we have to obey. And we're in the alliance that you can't do with so much. That's right. which, but you're right with the technology and how we've got now. They could have dropped one bomb and destroyed everywhere. Yes, so the fact that our remnant has survived, yes, and we're going to talk about that remnant in just a minute, My and let you kind of see what we're doing. One other thing is, uh, and it goes back to what Manana said, how can we continue to trust God's judgment even when it seems as though he is delayed? Our late or our time is not God's time. That's right. He can he neither slumbers or sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Pat Davis. <laughs> he doesn't slumber, nor does he sleep. I like that. He is awake. And not only is he awake, he is aware of what's going on. That's right. Okay? So you probably know where we're going to be. Uh, we spent a little time there, and we had to because I wanted to introduce the lesson today. If you studied Isaiah 33, and I said you've made your notes, I like that. 
if you studied Isaiah 33, then you already know this is the last of the woes. Mm -hmm. The woes. But this time, the woes is not against the Israelites. The woes are to those persons mm -hmm. who have mistreated the Israelites. That's right. Those persons whose judgment is coming. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know today. Now, the wrong thing to do is to sit back and wait till God gets somebody. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on, y'all know it. Well, that's what we used to think. When somebody's done us wrong and then something happened to them, God get me. Well, I'm telling you, you don't mean that much for God to get somebody because of you. And you don't never want to pray that God gets somebody. Okay. God is God and He will recommend But you should never even say that because you're accusing Him of something that He didn't give you any knowledge of. But we have done it. But we do it. We have done it. Absolutely. All right, comments? Okay. So let's look at this. These are the woes. He comes out to you. He speaks to the destroyer. He speaks to those who have been destroyed. And here we know the uh, the entire uh, chapter is dedicated, or should I say, is targeted towards the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going about them more because in the uh, passage you will hear he says nations, other nations. other nations as well. And these other nations have uh, done some mischievous and bad deeds against the Israelites. And God is wanting them to know and making sure them call whether they are aware your day is coming. Okay. It's coming. That's right. All right. Remember now, Isaiah is prophetic. We're looking at the end time things that are forthcoming. And the reason why sometimes we think God is not doing anything is because it appears with our natural eyes. That's right. That's right. That he's not moving. That he's not acting. That he's not working things out. But remember, uh, Deacon Bradley used to love me to say this. God is painting the big picture. Not just your sin. Yes. Or not just what you can see. Yes. Which ain't much. He's painting the big picture. <laughs> Last Tuesday, Thursday, my birthday, I was in the uh, Coliseum at the UNCG. And at graduations now, they encourage you to act sophisticated. <laughs> they kind of warn you, uh, you know, not to be loud, and they're trying to keep the children from being old, whatever. And this young fellow went across the stage. He shouted before he got his uh, diploma. Shouted while he was getting it. Shouted across the stage, and I was sitting there. Whoa, Jack here. Tamaya, my niece who goes to Western Salem was there and she was sitting over there and the parents were sitting behind me and I heard them say, God, I'm about to cry here hearing it. They said it took him seven and a half years. Wow. 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 But on that day he was gone. So when you know what you been through, and guess what? Right. My degrees are at my house and not in my office, but but it doesn't matter how long. Because right. they don't quit, it took seven years. Right. 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 You got it. Right. Right. Praise God, you got it. And that's the thing that you receive uh, your diploma despite the efforts. So he, he brings this to a close and he just says, What do you destroy? Woe to you who have not been destroyed. Uh oh, that's deep there. Because he talks about the judgment of God. Say, you have destroyed others, but guess what? You are getting ready to be destroyed. So, Mary, we ought not lose sleep when our enemy plots and schemes behind our back. In due time, Jesus said, All right, that what? Judgment is coming. And God, in uh, Psalm 37, Evil will be cut off. So we need to trust God, wait on Him, and know He's got everything under control. That's right. Yes, ma'am. That's why it's so important. Go ahead, preach it. Preach That's why it's so important for us to study and stay in God's Word. Because His Word is truth, His Word is life, and it's written right here for us. And once we can really comprehend God's Word, we know judgment is coming. Absolutely. And we have that assurance. Karen, I like that. We know judgment is coming, and we have that assurance. But the enemy would desire to distract us. That's right. Absolutely. To make us major in what God is seemingly not doing mm -hmm. rather than picking up that Bible mm -hmm. and saying, okay, there are people who've been through that this. Is, yes. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. And another example before we move into further, think about it in case y'all don't know this. When you get to the end of Malachi, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you 
got over 400 years. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you study that theologically, it's called the years of silence. God didn't say anything. Say anything. For 400 years. For 400 years. Then when Matthew comes on the scene, we hear about a child being born. Good God. Can you imagine that long way? Dig that concoction. If God would have sent a text or read it or call somebody them flowers on the phone and said, look, y'all, I know you haven't heard anything from me, but I'm working. Mm. But for 400 years, Jesus. heaven was quiet. It was quiet. No noise, no prophecy. Uh, Nobody said anything. Yeah, Come on, Jesus. Elder Hubbard, what am I supposed to do when I don't hear anything? My, my, my. You just have to wait. Ah, wait. Oh, wait. Said, just wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. After one week? After one month? After one year? After 400 years? And then he showed up. Made you call on him. Shepherds on a field, wide by night. And hear and see something happen. And God chose to allow his son to come to shepherds, the poor, the rejected. Shepherds were not allowed to go in the temple because they were considered unclean. And God brought Jesus, the message of Jesus to shepherds, the people who were outcasts before he brought it to anyone else. Comment. Brenda, then Deacon Mitchell was back. I have written on a card on my refrigerator that says, even when I can't trace God's I hand, can I can still trust him. Mm -hmm. I've got that too. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. For 400 years, he didn't say nothing, but he had did so much in the past that he had stood up for what he didn't say. Absolutely. For 400 years. Mm -hmm. But there again, Let's cross the bridge. You got to look at those persons who was born during that time. That's right. That's, that's right. Have you heard anything from God? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <clears throat> but in their culture, they had heard about God way before and that been handed down. But even though they didn't hear for 400 years, you know what he was going to say. You know what he was going to do? That's what the Habakkuk had the problem with. I don't know what you're going to do. Huh? Remember, I'll come back to what he just yeah, said. Yeah, I, I agree with that because he'd already, all through, all through the book of Isaiah, he's promising the Messiah. We got messianic prophecies that he's coming. We got, you know, we got all of that that he's going to accomplish whenever time does come for him to come. So we got something to hold on to. Now, I'm going to challenge both people. All right, not to be the devil's habit, but just to make you think. I was born after the um, the recording of Malachi. What gives me hope? He was born after. The same prophecies are still valid. Okay, I don't know anything about those prophecies. But you got orthodox Jews. Now y'all know we're not arguing. We just discussed. You got orthodox Jews and you got messianic Jews. The Orthodox Jews are saying, well, we don't see Jesus. We don't see him. But you still got the word. And they still say it today. Yeah, they still say it today. You still got the word. I don't believe in this word. They don't believe in that. That's their problem. I only believe in the law. Right. That's it. That's it. And he's in the law. He's in the law. He's in the law. He's in the law. Go ahead. But do if you can just visualize what was going on at the last of those 400 years, they every, they knew the Messiah was coming because the word had been broadcast. So the the Roman Empire. Empire. they knew that. What about then, the Roman Empire? Mm -hmm. the, the Roman Empire didn't care anything. They were crushing them. They were crushing them. Oh, crush. That's right. Crush. Crush. That's right. All of the world leaders had turned crush. things upside down. That's right. And yet you're telling me to trust this God. And, and then they all. killed all the babies under two. Absolutely. Because they heard that he was coming. So why am I waiting on you? So we have to wait. He got, there's some promises uh, all in that first book. Uh, 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 yes. There's some yes, promises. What if I've never read them? He didn't leave it. Oh. That, but even if you never read them, his promises, his words still don't stand. What if I've never read them? 
And the promise came before the law. Don't start stuttering. Don't start stuttering. Now, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to help you understand yeah. that sometimes we can't give the world now a broad answer. That's right. That's right. That's you got to. Yeah. You got to come a little deeper. You got to five. And you got to park your old Bible in there. Yes, I'm not fine. Yes, ma'am. And Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgression. Pointing towards. They already yeah. knew this. The, 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 uh -huh. the, uh, the, uh, the prophets already knew this. Yes. So they, they taught it to their children. That's, that's like, like how they were born. Deuteronomy 5, yes. this chapter. Yes. And when thou sittest down at yes. the table, yes. who yes. yes. you to? Yes. While you're having dinner, talk that's about it. Talk about it. Yes. Talk about it. Yes. Yes. But yet still, I want you to just understand. Yes. Right. You had those solid years. Yes. Yes. And some of the prophets themselves questioned. Mm -hmm. They did. Hmm. It was a, it was a, it was a depressed situation back then. It was. Yeah. But let's go back to what Miss Daniel says, and that's our only hope. That's our only hope. Those of us who know that we know. That's we know. We got to hold on to what we know. That's right. And we got to help convince those who do not know. That's right. That's our son. That's right. Y'all with me? Yes. Oh, I love the reading they gave you. <laughs> so, we look at this. He pronounces the judgment. Uh, he said, look, the land is going to be wasteful. God says the land is going to be desolate. Mm -hmm. yes, what does that mean? God said, I'm going to completely annihilate mm -hmm. and wipe out the people and the land. Mm -hmm. and the land. But then he, they say a prayer. Mm -hmm. Listen to verse 2. Lord, be gracious. I'm reading from the New International Version. Mm -hmm. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute, Reverend Dolly Bart. I want you to answer this. <laughs> and I'm not putting you on the spot, but you taught an mm -hmm. excellent job with the last two chapters. God accused them of turning themselves from him mm -hmm. and turning to Egypt. Mm -hmm. yes. But notice he said, they said, we long for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I guess I'm answering the questions I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when it seems like God has forsaken us, mm -hmm. so it, he's allowing that circumstance mm -hmm. to get us to turn our attention back to him. Yes. 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 Look, they said, we long for you. Yes. They didn't say we long for Egypt. That's right. and, and Pastor, that's the purpose of the judgment. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So that they can turn back to yeah. Egypt. So then, in 2024, when he allows us to go through something, yeah. God is not just interested in healing you from a sickness. Right. God is interested in your spirituality. That's right. Right. Your spiritual being being right. rejuvenated. Yeah. That you would turn from the world and turn to him. Yes, right. yes man. You want to do it? He allows certain things. Yes. 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 Always for our salvation. Yes, yes. yes man. That's right. Yes, man. That's right. I like that. But listen to what he said. Listen to what their prayer said. They said, be our strength every morning. Yes. Our salvation in the time of distress. Yes. Listen, be our strength every morning. And our salvation in the time of distress. Anybody want to talk about that? How you think that that could be something that we could incorporate into our daily prayers? Yes. Someone? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> be our strength every moment. Now, King James adds something that I think is instrumental. In verse 2, New International Version said, Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in the time of distress. Mm -hmm. King James says, We have waited for you. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Is he on the salvation? Ma'am? On God's salvation? Absolutely. Our salvation. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're waiting. Yes. All right? And they understand Lord, that he's yes, their strength and he's their salvation. And as she said, he's waiting on the arm. Of God. I mean, yes, that's good. Yes. Normally, we hear the right hand of God. Uh -huh. Being the arm of God. Jesus. Good. So, when you look at that, we all spend every morning, all right? King James says, We have waited for you. So, in other words, we are aware that some things have gone on. We are aware that the Assyrians have been allowed to do certain things. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of everything, Brenda, they make it clear, we have waited for you. Mm -hmm. I want to ask to see your hands, but I hope you will nod. How many of you are waiting on God to do something? Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. 
Don't get weary while you wait. Yes, sir. Sometimes I do. Mary just said, in due time, in his time, he will come. All right. Pastor Henry. Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, it, oh, you have been. Um, mm -hmm. That's why. Oh, so you graduated from the reading academy. <laughs> I love you, I kind of really like how the message says it. He's in, chapter, in verse 2 it says, God treat us kindly. You are our only hope. Oh, 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 oh God. Yeah. Now, I have to be honest with you. I did King James, New International Version, and I did the Amplified. I always do a minimum of three. I did not do the message. Mm -hmm. Please That's read that again. Day. He said, God treat us kindly. You're our only That's hope. That's verse two. Our yes. only. Our only hope. Mm -hmm. First thing in the morning, be there for us. When things go bad, help us out. Mm -hmm. Our only. Our only hope. No one. But people tell you like, what did it do? Come back and take this away. I just did it. Oh, our only hope. What does that one word only do? Nothing else. Nothing else. There are any other options. There are any other options. Sorry. Only. 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 Absolutely. Only. You remember Sister Tyson in the movie uh, The Diary of Mad Black Woman? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What's the young lady? Uh, Elise. Uh, Elise. Elise. Yeah. Yeah. She visits. Uh, Sister Tyson, in the nurse's mother in the nurse's room, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she tells her mother about the uh, marriage has fallen apart and the struggles, and she says, uh, "What was his name? Alonzo?" Uh, 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 <laughs> she said he was a mean man. <laughs> but, but you remember, I remember. I, you know, I like watching movies, but anyhow, she said he was my everything. Yeah. Yeah. They have done that. Sister Tyson shuts her down. Yeah. 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 And she said, Don't you ever say that. That's right. That's right. that a man is doing it. She said, Only God is doing everything. Good point. Because when we say that our spouses, come on, our lovers or whoever is our everything, you are saying to God, You are sacrifice to this person. <laughs> you say it all day long. Uh, it's, it's what you really believe. That Absolutely. Now, Rep. Cole, you know we got a spy among us today. <laughs> <laughs> he is our faithful evening Bible study. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. So listen now. Pastor, 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 Pastor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. In that same movie. They played the song Yield Not to Temptation. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And in that song it was saying, Ask the Savior to help. To help. To help. Yeah. Comfort, strength, and strength. He is willing to be carried. He will carry you through. So we hear the prayer. Verses 4 through 6, you he hear references of that day. Your plunder of nations was harvested by young locusts. Uh oh. Like a swarm of locusts, people pounce on. Oh, that's the judgment. Mm. Mm. That's the judgment. Why? God says, look, the locusts are coming. Yes. And they are going to devour you. Mm. What does locusts do? They, they do everything. everything. Destroy. everything. They destroy you. Destroy. 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 Everything. All right, everything in sight. Yes. God says, the land is going to be desolate. Look, I want to remind you, this is what you did to the Israelites. Yes. And now you're going to get a taste of what you have. That's right. It's your life. Verses 10 to 12, uh, we hear something else that I want to circle, and I did skip the other part, you get it. 10 to 12 is what I really want you to hear, because it says, three nines. I'm going to read it from the New International Version. Now will I rise, says the Lord. What did he say, Rev. Caldwell? I'm getting ready to get up. You thought I've been sitting down quiet, but I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to shoot. Now will I arise. I'm getting up. Not only am I going to get up, this is what he says. Now will I be exalted? Uh oh, he's going to rise and he's going to be exalted. And then now, 
I will I be lifted up. It makes exalted. That's two different things there. Exalting, exalt, exaltation is exalting him. Lifting up is a whole nother thing. Three things from God. Now, I know you thought that I've been quiet. I know you thought I had forsaken you. I know you thought I had forgotten you. But I've just given you three nights. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Right now. Three now. Right now. I will be exalted. I will rise. And I will be lifted up. Lifted up. Comments. All right. Here. Yes, sir. Are you going to distinguish those for us? I'm sorry? Are you going to distinguish those three things for us? I just did. Uh, would you mind doing it again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I will rise. Okay, remember now. We're talking about the Assyrians and how they had uh, complete, complete thought. They had completely taken over. Taking over. Okay. And there, are, look at, look at our, uh, what's the nation that Russia is taking against now? Ukraine. 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 I was just checking y'all to see if y'all were on board. Okay. <laughs> I won't call the nation's leader since we are alive. Okay. And since we are a religious organization, I can't do too much mixing there. It would seem like the leader of the uh, opposing country mm -hmm. yeah. thinks he's untouchable. I got the power. Mm -hmm. With a stroke of a button, with the pressing of a button, with my command. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And so when you go a long time and it seems like mm -hmm. that no one can approach you, mm -hmm. that no one is your equal, mm -hmm. that you've got power, mm -hmm. you get hated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary said, but the old folk used to say headstrong mm -hmm. and think that you can't be touched. And the longer it takes for God to move, the more you start to feel yourself. And then you got Ukraine sitting back saying, why is this happening to us? And to them, it may appear that God is just sitting somewhere. I'm helping you get this. Now God says, I will arise. When God gets up, he's getting up to move. I have heard the cry. I'm getting to do something. Okay? I will be exalted. Remember, in 31 and 32, the exaltation went to the Egyptians. Uh, they were looking to other nations when God was trying to say, I want you to turn to me. So God says, I've got your attention now. I'm, it's my time of exaltation. Okay? And then finally, I will be lifted up. Okay. Now, preachers that are here, if I didn't do a good job of that, please add to that. I welcome you to do that. You did, and, and I'm going to go back to uh, Dr. Holliday's message version, where he says, now I'm stepping in, mm -hmm. God says. Mm -hmm. From now on, I'll take over. Yeah. The gloves, oh. come off. The gloves now, are coming off. how mighty I am. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yes. Yes. Eugene Vincent did an excellent job is now the gloves are coming off. And you don't want to box with the gloves. Oh, is it too short to box with that? So he, he does this. He talks about it. Uh, the land is dried up. It's wasted away. And we move forward. And of course I don't have time to cover all the verses. We're trying to just highlight the pieces. One of the things that I wanted to bring up is in verse 11, if somebody would read that, please. Beginning with 11. You conceive chaff. You bring forth stubble. Your breath is a fire that consumes you. Where have you heard that word C-H-A-F-F? Where have you, you heard it? Chaff. 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 And God said, let it grow together. Because he'll separate. He'll do the separation. He said, he'll do the separation. I'll do the separation. That's right. Yes, sir. What's that say to you, Reverend Brown? You just heard it. He's going to do the separation. Is he qualified to do it? Yes. You wholeheartedly believe that? Yes. He knows. Y'all mentioned, I heard about all of this, he's going to take his gloves off. 
<laughs> but let's go beyond that because he differentiates between two groups of people in verse 13. Listen to this. Somebody read that. He talks about you who are far away and you who are near. Hear you who are far off, says the Lord, what I have done. And you who are near, acknowledge my mind. Far off? Did you hear that? Yes. That's two groups of people. Those who are near. Those who are far off were the Gentiles. Those who are near to Israel. Now I'm going to mess with your mind theologically. But don't you think it's quite ironic that our Lord tends to focus on the far off? The Gentiles? Why? Genesis right off the bat when he talks to um, Abram. He says, all. Oh, Absolutely. And that includes the 10,000. And you, excellent. You remember the Apostle Paul? When he struck him down and he said, I am sending you to the Gentiles. Which shows us that God was interested in not just the Israelites. But everybody. The Bible says he came into his own and his own received him not. So God says, I'm interested in all of our children. I'm going after those who are near and those who are far away. Absolutely. And in case you don't know, we'll end up a far off We are not Jews. All right? We are adopted because of the blood of the Lamb. Comment. Yes, sir. You know, I actually. I could do this all day long. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, you, you and I appreciate the work of uh, uh, the historian, the Jewish historian. Oh, yes. I've got his book you know, in my office. And, and, and when you read Isaiah, <laughs> he's prophesizing to Judah in 740 BC, but he is really intimating to the northern kingdom that in 20 years you're going to be wiped out by the Assyrians, mm -hmm. but yet he's given the Judeans another 138 years. To understand that what's happening up there is going to happen here. Now that you guys are so separated, you know, there's a near and a far, that if you don't get it, then we tend to complain about God taking so much time. But if God was willing to give them 20 years in one instance and 138 years in the next, it's just like our world today. We might be seeing something, as far as we're concerned, in the near school, but God is looking at the far bigger picture. And yet, if we don't get it, we're going to fall into the same Absolutely. hole. And it goes back to topic of something Ben Brown said uh, a couple months ago when we were studying. And even though it looks like we got near and afar off, we got all these Assyrians and all these other countries, but God's design was to bring all of them into war. Yes. That's why I want to make it clear. God is never interested in single shot. No. God is interested in making everything come under uh, his will and purpose for our lives. So he moves on. He talks about Zion. Talks about the sinners in Zion. Uh-oh. The godless Israelites as well as the godless Gentiles. That's right. Do y'all think we still, I'm sorry, Angela. Do y'all think we still have godless people today? Yes. yes. So what are we going to do about the godless? Who said it? I heard you. Let him. Let the weak and the tired. Let him handle it. He knows how to handle it. Yes. You know, and oftentimes in that, um, Pastor, um, we have to understand that God uses us. That's where he tells us to go out and make disciples. And oftentimes it's our testimonies, the lifestyle that we live before people that would draw them to Christ. Absolutely. We always have to, we, we are a part of God That's during right. that process. It's not always God just cutting them off. Oftentimes it's God sending us out, like, just like the Apostle Paul, to witness to these individuals and to draw them into Christ. Amen. Thank you for the call. Now listen to this. This is where I'm close. He said, listen, in 21, again, remember I'm reading from the New International Version. He says, there the Lord will be almighty. Mm -hmm. Talking about in that day now. Mm -hmm. It will be like a place of broad rivers and streams. Mm -hmm. No galley but oars will ride them. No mighty ship will sail them. For the Lord is our judge. That makes me smile. Yes, yes. The Lord is our Lord judge. The Lord is our king. It is who? It is he who will save us. Amen. That's right. Wow. Your rigging 
and hangs loose. The mast is not held secure. The sail, it sounds a bit poetic, is not spring. All of these things are things that are forthcoming. Because the Prince of Peace is coming. And we've already been told about him. The Prince of Peace. So what then? Angela, I know you're recording, but you can still talk. What then do we do while we wait for the Lord's judgment? We just Come. continue trusting and believing yes. and trusting in him. So we know he's going to do it. And Angela, I want to add to what you said because I would argue today that don't wait for the day to come. That's correct. But look at the progressive. Yeah, progressive means ongoing. A day by day, the judgment of God is taking place. Day by day, God is showing himself mighty. It may not look like it, but he's using all things and causing them to work together. Yes, sir. For the good of those who love the Lord and who are the cold according to his purpose. Now, Deacon S. Carlton has been on the Isle of Patmos all day. By herself. And to shine the caribou. What are you taking on? God said he'll never leave us, don't forsake us. He'll never leave us, don't forsake us. He'll always be here for us. He'll always be for us? Yes. Good, I like that. Bring them back to the judgment of God. Janice, you've been quiet all day. <laughs> the judgment of God. Are you going to wait? Or are you going to get frustrated? Or are you going to say, God, why don't you do something? No, I'm going to wait. I, I was inspired uh, about those 400 years that God was quiet. Mm -hmm. So I've been waiting on a prayer I think for like 19 years. So now I know that prayer is definitely going to be asked. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm inspired by that. I, I know it. that prayer. Janice, I think I'm on the same bus that you are. I got something that looks like I've been waiting, 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 but I know oh, something is going to be quiet. It seems like he's quiet. Seems like he's quiet. Seems that's quiet. quiet. Seems that's quiet. quiet. Seems that's he's working. Yes. That's right. He's working. Yes. 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 And all that's probably going to take on. Yeah. 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 But don't you not allow unless you come back at 6 30. <laughs> <laughs> the big deal for me though is this right here. I gotta do my part. That's right. It's saying that God will have, have us do. And and once I do my part, I say, okay, God, now it's yours. You the DJ, you go ahead and you turn this, uh, this thing out. Now, a few minutes ago you asked me to define yeah. the three now. I'm going to flip it back to you. What would you say then is our part? I said I got to do my part. Yeah. Let's speak collectively. What would you say is our part? Our duty. I've got to care of myself in the way that God would have me to. Oh, <laughs> well, just say it. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. And, 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 and as, as long as I care of myself that way, I'm doing what he wants me to do. You know, because I mean, what else can I do? And then whenever I, I, I've just gotten to that point, then I say, God, this is your thing. You go ahead. I, 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 I've done as much as I can. I don't see any more that I can do. If that is, you let me know. But this is all I think I'm supposed to be doing. And I am letting go of it. And whenever I do that, man, it, it, Now, it, tell me what does it mean to let go of it? Huh? Quit trying to be in control. She help me. She said, put it in his hand. I ain't gonna be in control. I ain't gonna try to be in control. Do y'all agree? Yeah. So what? She said, so what? She said, so what? Uh oh. Uh oh. She said, so what? Pat Davis said, so what? Don't y'all fight it here. Why did you say so what? What we need to do is to keep him lifted up. That's right. He said, because if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. So that take care of everybody. That's my part. That's how they come back. Let me come back. And again, Elder Hunter. Rev. Our Lord, Rev. Brown. Rev. Caldwell. I'm going to kind of help you with that statement. Okay. We use it out of context. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. That lifted up referred to him being lifted up on the cross. Oh, on the cross. Oh, okay. 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 However, we just heard him say, I will exalt him. Uh -huh. Exalt him. That's the best.